With the internet, your computer can talk to others all over the world. But that seems like it shouldn't be possible. After all, you're using a different language than people in, say, France or Japan. So, how do computers all over the world communicate with each other? The answer is that computers speak their own set of languages, called protocols. Once your computer has been linked to an Internet Service Provider, or ISP, and a connection has been established, it can communicate with any other computer on the Internet. Your computer will be capable of accessing everything the Internet has to offer. This is only possible because of the variety of standard protocols that exist. These protocols represent a set of languages specific to computers that are standard around the globe. In March 1989, Tim Berners-Lee at the European Laboratory for Particle Physics, CERN, proposed a new set of protocols for Internet Information Distribution, HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, FTP, File Transfer Protocol, POP, Point of Presence, SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and NNTP, News Groups Protocol. We'll get up close and personal with each of these in just a second. These five protocols became known as the World Wide Web Protocols and were soon adopted by the Internet community. Before the World Wide Web, the Internet consisted mostly of email, news groups, and FTP. Unlike today's graphical interfaces, the original text-based tools were invented to help categorize what information there was and where it was. But the Internet was not exactly what you'd call user-friendly. If you needed a specific program or file, it was next to impossible to find, unless you knew already exactly where it was. Luckily, that's all over with. Now we have specific software to address each of the W3 protocols. We have browsers to help us locate and look at web pages, email clients to help us create, send, and receive email, news readers, FTP programs to download files, and chat software for Internet Relay Chat. These programs do most of the heavy lifting for you, which is how machines are supposed to work, right? Let's review some of these protocols. One of the most commonly used by programmers is called HTTP, short for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. The World Wide Web is transmitted using HTTP, as you might guess from the start of a web address. HTTP defines how messages are formatted and transmitted, and what actions web servers and browsers should take in response to various commands. When you enter a URL in your browser, it sends an HTTP command to the web server directing it to fetch and transmit the requested web page to your computer. The web doesn't just use HTTP, though. Each of the different functions of the web is governed by a different protocol. Makes sense, right? When you exchange files, you are using FTP, the File Transfer Protocol. To send an email, you use SMTP, the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. This is often used together with POP or IMAP in email programs. POP3, Point of Presence, is used to retrieve email from a mail server. Most email applications, sometimes called email clients, use the POP protocol, although some can use the newer IMAP, Internet Message Access Protocol. Basically, there are two versions of POP. The first, oddly enough called POP2, became standard in the mid-80s and requires SMTP to send messages. The newer version, POP3, can be used with or without SMTP. You've probably seen these mentioned in your mail settings. One other commonly used protocol is NNTP, the News Groups Protocol. This protocol is used to post, distribute, 
and retrieve messages from Usenet, a worldwide bulletin board system. Each protocol is sent and received by its own type of software, which responds to that protocol, but not to the others. This keeps the lines of communication open and gives your computer the information it needs to get the job done. You're using these protocols all the time, even if you don't notice. Your personal computer is merely acting as a translator.